What up campers? This time we've got a super special camping recipe. We're making a South African poikikos in our Dutch oven. Basically this is a South African stew and it has a bunch of meat, veggies, potatoes, all that good stuff. You slow cook it in the Dutch oven over the open flames and uh, very traditional, super awesome and perfect for camping. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get all the ingredients prepared. That means chopped up roughly the same size. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to the boss and she's gonna get all that done and then we'll work on getting our fire and coals ready. So I told them that poiki is basically a South African stew. Is that right? This is where you're gonna get into some arguments. Don't ever argue with a South African that it's a stew or a soup. It's a poiki. The biggest thing to a poiki is once you get it at kind of that medium or low heat, medium low heat, you actually don't open up the pot and stir it. You layer all your foods and your liquids and then you don't open it until it's, it's ready. ready. South Africans will listen to the poiki a lot. You want to hear a slight, very slight simmer and a, maybe a pop of a bubble, a boiling bubble here or there, but you really don't want to be hearing it boiling all the time. So it looks like we're going for Brussels sprouts, carrots, onions, and meat. Is that the tradition? You can do anything from chicken, red meat, meat, game meat, pork, fish even, or you can just do a straight up veggie poiki. You basically layer it, meat at the bottom, then veggies in the order of fast or slowest cooking to fastest cooking. Call your you... dense hard stuff first, meat, then your dense stuff, and then gradually add the at stuff the rest. that needs less time. Yep, and then the top is always the uh, starch layer. So we're using potatoes, but that really helps kind of form that seal at the top for the poiki as well. You can use potatoes, rice, pasta, you can use whatever starch you Orzo. want. Orzo. We really love our little lodge Dutch oven and tripod setup, so I'll put a link down below if you guys want to check those out. But uh, it's just a fun way to cook when you're camping. All right, now that she got all that stuff prepped and ready to roll, we're gonna go ahead and get the coals and fire going, and then we'll throw the meat on. are ready to go we're gonna spread the wood and the coals we're gonna do about 20 coals or so for now and then hold some back and we'll just adjust the height and add coals as we need to to kind of keep it at that temperature like she said a low simmer and then we'll get the poiki on and throw in the oil and the meat and we're also gonna do the onions the fire is all ready and the pot is hot which is a critical first step because you need to get some color on that meat and on the onions so uh, the boss is gonna go ahead and add the oil, onions, and meat. Pro tip, do not leave your seasoning cloth in there when you're heating up the pot. You can hear the sound of California's bullet train flying overhead. That would be Southwest. Give it all a good stir, let it get some color, and then we're gonna raise it up and add some liquid. And veggies. So the meat's been browning in the onions for about five, seven minutes, something like that. Uh, it's got some decent color on it. You could probably go longer on this phase, but we don't want to eat at nine o'clock at night. So we're going to go ahead and chuck in those dense veggies. And then Nadia's going to make up the sauce that goes with it. Basically, 
basically use whatever you have on hand. Uh, you want things that's going to impart that umami or that flavor. So we're going with some red, starting with a base of red wine. We'll be adding some soy sauce in the trailer. I carry the gluten-free soy sauce packets. We're going to add some various seasonings. Everyday seasoning to add that garlic. Whatever seasonings you have on hand that you like and you like the flavor of. Toasted onion dip mix. In South Africa, they use a lot of onion soup mix. We're gonna add some ketchup. We don't, you can add a whole can of tomato, either chopped or crushed tomatoes or tomato sauce. We're gonna use the last of the garlic dip that we have, which is just garlic and lemon and olive oil. For good measure, we're gonna add some salt. Another splash of wine, and that's, as you can see, about half of a decent-sized coffee cup, and we'll be watering that down with some, well, water. You already see how nicely it's cooking down. You don't want to stir once it goes into the pot. You want to keep your layers, so... working some of the garlic layers in there. And that's your sauce. So again, 40 minutes, put that lid on, make sure it's not boiling, but you do want the simmer, and then we'll check back when it's time to add the rest of the goodies. I recommend the of glove method because you can feel how bad it's simmering in there if you put your hand on top of it. You just don't want to do it with the bare hand. Uh, I'll give you the link to the of glove, the original. Bonus recipe. You can take uh, any sort of a bread dough, or in this case, Trader Joe's plain pizza dough, and you can use the top of the pan as a cooking, or the top of the Dutch oven as a cooking surface. Oiling my hands so it doesn't stick all over me. We got the gluten-free side with homemade dough. Not gonna be good, but it's worth a shot. Hardest part about making poiki, waiting. Waiting is definitely the hardest part. Look how sad mommy is. The uh, gluten-filled ones are looking like they might be ready for a little flip. So we're gonna just take a look and see what's going on here. Real quick on the Dutch oven, this is why you get the one with the lid that has a rim on it. You can't cook on top of it at the same time. So you can always make like these rolls or desserts. Nadia gave me a really weird look. So you can't make desserts, but you could definitely make rolls. Ha ha ha. You can see from that there's still enough liquid. Let's take a look at the liquid levels. Oh yeah. It's almost covering everything. Which isn't a thing, because it's once again, it's not a soup, it's not a stew, it's a poiki. So once you move everything out of the way and make a little hole, you'll see that there is a, about a quarter of an inch of liquid in there which is fine. Next layer, we're doing some of the bigger mushroom chunks, some green beans. We're gonna add some of this liquid that the veggies have been sitting in. Spread it nice and evenly, so no matter where, from which side you dish up, you're getting some of everything. And then comes the final layer, in our case, potatoes. And life is gonna be delicious. Tommy hungry. The lighting is terrible, but we just pulled off the rolls. We're gonna eat those as a little snack because our kids are getting ravenous. I didn't get home from work till about six, so you usually wanna start this a little earlier. Burning hands, but you can see, nicely cooked through. Show me 
Rooster Coca. All right, let's take a look. Here is the actual moment of truth, though. Let's see it. Ho, 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 ho. Once again, depending on your preference, you can put this on rice, you can put this on those rolls you made. We all ate the rolls, so we're just gonna have this by itself. And it looks bomb. When we dig in, we should get a bite of everything in every corner for every area. And after all that time cooking, idea this is chuck pulls right apart oh. super hot so I'm having some issues pulling it apart but you can see from the fork I think through the Brussels are nicely soft the let's try the potato the red potatoes just a fork soft and ready to go we are all cooked the carrots falling apart bomb meat falling apart that's what's up all right, so that's a wrap for the South African poiki. This one was a lot of fun. In case you guys haven't noticed, Nadia is South African, hence all the different South African recipes we're rocking lately. But uh, yeah, always fun to try out different stuff. And let us know in the comments if there's something that you have that's like a traditional meal where you're from or just something that you found online. We're always looking for new fun stuff to do. And uh, we'll go ahead and leave it there. If you like it, put a ring on it, click subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Mom's butt's right in the GoPro, so we're gonna get a nice time lapse. <laughs> Obviously, go pretty generous on the oil. Hey, this isn't diet food.